In this video, you'll see a demonstration of AWS IoT Device Advisor. We'll use the AWS IoT Python SDK to create a test harness and execute a Device Advisor test suite. The test suite validates the behavior of an IoT device. When the test suite completes, we'll create a cryptographically signed qualification report, which can be submitted to the AWS Partner Network to have the device qualified for the AWS Partner Device Catalog. All of this without the need to send the device in to AWS for testing. My name is Chris Green and I'm an IoT Specialist Solutions Architect in the AWS Worldwide Specialist Organization. Device Advisor is a cloud-based, fully managed test capability for validating IoT devices during device software development. Device Advisor provides pre-built tests that you can use to validate IoT devices for reliable and secure connectivity with AWS IoT Core before deploying the device into production. Device Advisor's pre-built tests help you validate your device software against best practices for using TLS, MQTT, device shadows and IoT jobs. If you'd like a higher level introduction to the AWS IoT Device Advisor service, I recommend you watch the How to Get Started with AWS IoT Core Device Advisor video. You'll also find a link to that video in the notes below. In this high level conceptual architecture diagram, we can see the four main components of the demonstration the IoT Core service and API that will be used to manage the test process, the Device Advisor service itself, which will execute the tests and provide a unique non production Device Advisor test endpoint for the device under test to connect to. The test harness, which uses the Python SDK to automate the test process. And finally, the actual device under test, which in this case is the pubsub.py client provided in the AWS IoT Python SDK samples on GitHub. There are four main steps in the demonstration. First, we will create the test suite in the AWS IoT Core Device Advisor console. This could also be done using the API, but in this demonstration we'll use the console. Secondly, we'll configure the test harness. This is in the Python code. Third, we'll run the test suite and monitor the progress of the individual test cases, again using the Python code. And finally, we'll retrieve the resulting device qualification report, again using the Python APIs. In the AWS IoT Core console, we can create Device Advisor test suites. Alternatively, we could use the Device Advisor API or AWS CLI to create the test suites. In this demonstration, we're just creating one test suite, so we'll use the console. In the menu on the left, in the test section, we expand the Device Advisor section and click on Test Suites. On the Test Suites screen, we have the option of creating a predefined qualification test suite, which is pre-populated with the minimum test cases needed for a qualification report that can be submitted to the AWS Partner Network. Alternatively, we have the freedom to create a custom test suite where we can drag and drop test cases from a pallet onto the test suite canvas. In this demonstration, we'll use the predefined qualification test suite. Once your test suite is created, it will be listed in the panel below. On the next screen, we have the choice of either using MQTT 3.1.1 or MQTT 5 for our tests. We'll use MQTT 3.1.1. Point one, point one. We now have the option to customise the global properties of the test suite in the upper right hand corner or to modify the test parameters for the individual test cases. For this demonstration we'll accept the defaults and click next. On the device role screen we can have a device role created for us or use an existing device role. If you elect to use an existing role, you should ensure the policies allow the connect, publish, receive, subscribe, and retain publish actions. Device Advisor will automatically create an appropriate policy for us when we choose create new role, which we will do for this demonstration. We then specify the client ID of the device under test and the topics that will be used for the tests. And finally, we review the test suite configuration and click Create Test Suite. 
Now that we've created the test suite in the Device Advisor console, we can move on to our Python code to configure the test harness for our device under test. The first thing we need to do is to configure the test harness. In the code, we will import the BOTO3 module, which includes all of the APIs we need for the AWS IoT Python SDK. We'll create two IoT core clients. The first will be used to interact with the Device Advisor API and the second to interact with the regular IoT APIs. We'll use the IoT client to retrieve the Device Advisor endpoint. This endpoint is unique to the Device Advisor service in the account and region where you are executing your tests and the endpoint will only accept connections while a test is in the running state. We'll list all of the available test suites and we'll choose to run the qualification test suite. We'll ensure that the test suite that we have requested uh, it does exist and we'll retrieve the test suite ID for later use. The next thing we need to do is to specify the client or the device under test. So we choose a thing from the thing registry. In this case, we'll choose a thing called device advisor test client. And we'll specify that we want to use that client. We just retrieve the ARN of that device just to make sure that it is a valid registry device and is available for the test. The next thing we need to do is to start the test suite itself. So we need to uh, initialize that test suite, start the test suite and wait for it to enter the running state. So we have a run ID and the test suite is now in the running state. The last thing we'll do here just uh, for information is to list the available tests or test individual test cases in this test suite. Now that we have our test suite up and running, we're ready to execute the tests themselves. This step will run repeatedly until all of the tests in, in the test suite have completed with either a uh, pass or fail or some other status. Here is the main loop for performing the tests. As I mentioned, this will loop continuously, continuously checking for the, uh, the status of the test that is currently running. And this is the crucial line of code here where we are this test harness is going to execute the pub sub uh, pi code with the specified parameters here. So we're using our device advisor endpoint and the certificates that we have uh, provided for this particular client. When this executes, we'll see uh, output appear below and that output will um, appear and disappear continuously until all of the tests are completed. So we can see here that the first test, the MQTT Connect test is running. We're seeing some diagnostic information relating to that test execution here. That test has passed and now we're moving on to the next test. While these tests are running, I'll just take a moment to describe what we're testing for with each of these tests. The MQTT Connect test validates that the device will in fact send a Connect request and respond appropriately to a connection acknowledgement and will also retry when no connection acknowledgement is received. We're also looking to see that the retries are being executed in an exponential sort of timing fashion with some jitter around the timing. With the MQTT subscribe tests, we're validating that the device under test subscribes to MQTT topics successfully, that the device will retry if a subscription fails, 
and that the device uh, sends a publish acknowledge when receiving a quality of service one message on the subscribe topic. In the MQTT publish test, we validate that the device under test publishes a message with both QoS0 and quality of service one. Uh, we ensure that the device republishes messages sent with a quality of service one if the broker doesn't respond with a published acknowledgement. And we also make sure that the device publishes messages with the retain flag set to true where appropriate. The TLS Connect tests validate that the device in the test can complete a TLS handshake with uh, the AWS IoT endpoint and also that the device supports the AWS IoT recommended Cypher suites. Also for the TLS tests, the device is expected to refuse to connect if the certificate provided by the server is not signed by a recognized certificate authority. If the subject name in the server certificate does not match the domain name and also if the certificate has expired. Now that the test suite is completed, we can see that all the test cases have in fact passed. Uh, two of the final TLS tests have passed with some warnings. The TLS incorrect subject name server certificate test validates that if the device under test is presented with a certificate for a domain name that is different from the one requested, as is the case in this test, the device under test is expected to send a fatal bad certificate alert response to the device advisor endpoint and immediately terminate the connection. In this case, the device under test immediately terminated the connection, which is a pass, but did not send a fatal alert response, which is the warning. The TLS expired server certificate validates that the device under test closes the connection if it is presented with an expired server certificate. The device under test is expected to send a fatal certificate expired alert response to the device advisor endpoint and immediately terminate the connection. The TLS unsecure service certificate validates that the device under test closes the connection if it's presented with an expired service certificate or if the service certificate is not signed by a recognized certificate authority. The device under test is expected to send either a fatal certificate expired alert response or an unknown certificate authority alert response to the device advisor endpoint and immediately terminate the connection. In this case, the device under test immediately terminated the connection, which is a pass, but did not send the fatal alert response, which is the warning. We'll be able to see the warning messages in the report, which is our next step. To retrieve the report, we use the device advisor client to retrieve the status of that particular run, specifying the, the run ID, and we make sure that the run is complete and it's not in the pending or still running state. Then we use the device advisor client again to retrieve the details of the report. And here you can see the XML formatted digitally signed report for the tests that we just ran. This can be downloaded and can be opened in Microsoft Excel uh, with a little formatting, which I'll show you in a moment, and can produce uh, a nice concise test summary. So here we are in Excel. We're opening the raw XML file. Each of the columns represents an element in the XML file. By selecting the columns that we're interested in, adding some timing information, we can see that we've got a nice report that also includes the reasons for the warnings. So that concludes the demonstration. We've seen how we can use the AWS IoT Core Python SDK to create a test harness and automate the execution of a device advisor test suite and the production of a device test report that can be submitted to the AWS partner network to have the device qualified for the AWS Partner Device Catalogue. Thank you for watching.